Thank you for joining us in our journey to learn Flutter and Flame to build these fun games and learn some awesome programming. We've just built this tiled map and it has these pineapples here which are both an obstacle and to see it while we're developing we have this invisible invisible fruit that we can check and de-check. So this layer here is just so that we can see where the obstacle bounding boxes are. We want to get this thing into our game so that when Charlie walks around and collides with a pineapple, uh, then Charlie can uh, maybe get some scores or get some food or we can work on the goal of our game here. Despite still having the fruit layer in this object group here, we actually don't have the fruit showing and this is what we want. We want the program itself to add the fruit in so that when the trolley collides with the fruit, we can remove the fruit from the, sc from the screen. And potentially in the future take some other additional actions such as incrementing a score. So let's get our program a little bit more organized because it's getting a little long and we now have just a single file in here. So I'm going to create a new folder called actors. And I'll create another folder called world. So our game is divided up into actors like, you know, maybe movie actors and then the world itself. So the actors can be non-living objects as well too, uh, such as fruit. It's something that you have interaction with. So I'm gonna create a new file called fruit.dart. And we'll have this thing initially extend a sprite component. In this case, we're going to use the Mixin has game ref and something called collision callbacks. And we'll have it accept a final tiled object, which we'll send to it from main.dart. So we would need to import the tiled object and it's from the package tiled. <clears throat> so the control dot didn't work, but I know that it's in tiled right here. Tiled, not flame tiled. So now this class here has is no longer red, but this one is because we need a constructor. So this one, I think I'll try control dot and there's a con create constructor for final fields. I'll select this one. And all it does is this creates a, a constructor that is going to receive the fruit. So as you know, the constructor is just a method. In this case, it's going to be run when we first instantiate the fruit and the method has the same name as the class right here. So we continue to build out our fruit or our pineapple here. The sprite component so this is a sprite component. It has an override method built into it, same as the main. And this is from, uh, this onload will be from flame. So 
So this is looking very similar to what we have in main dot dark here. It's exactly the same. The spread component itself also has this onload method that we can override. As you recall from Charlie, uh, Charlie has an image, uh, but Charlie is a sprite animation component. And we're loading a bunch of stuff about Charlie within the main, the main method. For the fruit, we're going to make it a little bit more isolated. So this fruit, the sprite word is from the sprite component. <coughs> this game ref is from this has game ref. These are both from flame. So we're loading the sprite for the piece of fruit. And in this case, I think I'll do pineapple, pineapple underscore three X. Or a pineapple. Okay, down here it says it's 96. So I'm assuming this first square is 96 by 96. Okay, let's go back into main. This is the map right here. We're loading the home map right here. Tiled component dot load. And this is the map file, right? So this is where it's getting parsed. Our objective is to load the obstacle portion of it, which is we want to get this obstacle group. So the first, the bottom one here we're dealing with first is fruit. And then the top one is the obstacles, which are the ground and the mountains. We're going to get the objects as a list. And Okay, I'm going to need to import tile. As I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, this tiled package is automatically imported into our system when you import flame tiled. So the tiled package is not within your pubspec.yaml but it's a dependency of flame tile, so you'll be able to use it. So we'll start off with the home map. And the home map has a property, tile map. So this home map is entire map data that we're holding. And within there, the, one of the properties which is built into the uh, flame tiled right here is we didn't make this name up here the tile is part of this uh, object that you get when you part start parsing it and 
and then we'll get the layer. So this method again is from that package. And we're gonna get the layer fruit. So at this point we have this object group but within the object group, there's a list of objects which we're going to grab. So this syntax, you can figure out if you start playing around with uh, flame top, but so this whole map is just the entire data, right? When we loaded it in, it's right here. So when you load the tiled component dot load, when you load the map, you have this variable right here. So this main object has an object tile map, and then we're using this method get layer, and we'll tell it to get um, a bunch of tiled objects. The name of the specific layer is from the the tile map. So that word fruit with the upper case F. It's the same word here. That's the linkage between the two files. And then we're grabbing it. We're telling it that's not going to be null. And then we're grabbing the list of objects. So now we have the list of objects. So we just do a for loop. Bar fruit and fruit object. Maybe I should call it objects. There you go. And we're going to add the fruit. We have to import. So this fruit is the class that we just created. Okay. So it's going to load the fruit, but there's, we're not displaying it properly at this point. Let's see. So currently there's no fruit, but there's also no error. So this is a good thing. So let's try to get this fruit to appear on the screen every time that it loads. I'm back on the fruit.dart file and we're in the onload method. So all these actions will take place when our fruit <laughs> is starting to load. First thing we'll do is we'll add a side to our fruit. So we, we do we did add the sprite here. And because we're in the onload method of the fruit, we have access to the the size of the fruit. And I think I want to make our fruit 96. So it appears we only have one fruit, but this is actually um, it's, the, it's all the fruit that we have in our game. It's just I didn't specify the size yet or the position. So it's going one over the other. So it appears to be working where it has all the all the fruit that we have in our map. It's just going over one over the other because they're all at zero, zero. If you don't specify a position, then the sprite component will be placed at zero, zero. So they're all in the exact same location, which is why it appears, it seems like it's only one, but it's multiple fruit. So we need to set the position. Position, and we have the fruit for the, the individual fruit that we passed in. So this word fruit is this word fruit here. It's our, the variable that's specific to this one 
sprite component class, uh, the fruit. And the fruit that we're receiving has an X, oh, yeah, fruit, and it has a Y. So let's give it a shot, see what it looks like. Okay, all the fruit are now appearing, and these are individual sprite components, so we can take some action on it. So one of the actions we want to take is to add a rectangle head box on it at the time of load. And this rectangle head box is what we're going to need for the collision detection. When the Charlie interacts with a pineapple, I just found out that chickens do eat fruit. So maybe there's some, um, I guess some reality to our little story that's developing here. Chickens do eat fruit. I've never raised a chicken. to the center and I'll put the the position at the center of the pineapple sprite component position oops, size over to this size here is the size of the entire sprite component it's not this it's not the size of the game remember where we're within the sprite component, this fruit sprite component class here. So when it says size here, it's the size of the overall sprite component. Well, let's see how it looks. Okay, so we have our nice collision box that's pretty close around the pineapple because we drew it out and tiled this way. And then the this pineapple is built up from a number of different uh, tiles. So that's why there's this rather large border around it. But the collision error will only be this portion here. Congratulations on getting the pineapple into the game. The next video will add the hitbox onto Charlie so that when you collide Charlie with the pineapple, you can remove the pineapple from the game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Have a great day.